Let's take a look at race number eight on Saturday at Prairie Meadows. It is the Iowa Derby. It's a mile and 16th with a purse of $250,000. Let's take a look at the field. Eight to one is the one horse, Mugatu. Mugatu broke his maiden at Gulfstream Park back in November of last year. Well, that, that was his last win. Hasn't won since. They put him on the Derby Trail. John Pataglia, he finished fourth behind by seven and a half. Next time out in a rush away, finished eighth in that race. And he tried him in the grade one bluegrass. Finished fifth. Well, he outran his odds. He was 181 to one. Next time out in the Preakness. Yeah, he didn't do well at all in the Preakness. He got eased in that race. Finished eighth behind by 40. Getting eight to one on the one horse, Magatu. He's taking a big drop in class in this one. And well, blinkers are coming off, so maybe that might help. He's got some nice workouts coming into this one. Eight to one on the one horse, Mugatu. Let's take a look at Kitty Hawk. Now, Kitty Hawk is cross entered an in Indiana Derby. Only one win out of six races, and that's a maiden win. Getting 20 to 1 on the two horse, Kitty Hawk. Look at the three horse, Henro at 12 to 1. Broke his maiden at Oakland Park at six furlongs. Two races back last time, on at Oakland again over a sloppy track. The distance of six furlongs. Now he's showing increase in speed figures. They're going to stretch him out to a mile and the sixteenth. His jockey, Rafael Bearano. Well, he's won this race twice. Getting twelve to one on the three horse, Henro. I will use Henro. On my tickets. At 8 to 1, it's Northern Flame. He should be forward in this race. Broke his maiden at Churchill Downs last year. Going gate to wire. A few races after that. Gate to wire again at Oakland Park. Winning by a neck. After that, they raced him in a rebel. He didn't do bad. He finished third at 15 to 1. Then they tried synthetic surface. And he wanted nothing to do with that, finishing eight behind by nine and three quarters. Next time out in Pat Day Mile, he struggled in that one. He finished ninth. Nine by six and a quarter. He was eight wide in that race. And the Matt win. Not good either, finishing seven behind by 18. His last three races, he's, he's looked awful. He's looked pretty bad his last three races. He's getting eight to one on the four horse, Northern Flame. Twenty to one is Zatara. Zatara broke his maiden at this racetrack and by a length and a quarter. Next time out in a minor stakes race, lost by a nose. Those are some pretty weak speed figures that Zatara has. He's going to have to step up his speed figures big time. He's getting 20 to 1. Five horse, Zatara. Let's take a look at Oki Clipper at 20 to 1. When stretching out to the one mile distance, broke his maiden, went about four and a half. Right here at this racetrack. Stepping up in class here. Those speed figures are kind of weak. He's going to have to step up those speed figures as well. Should be close to the lead. 
getting 20 to 1 on the six horse. OK, Clipper. Next level at 7 to 2, Keith the Sorrow has been pretty high on this horse since day one. In the second race, ran him in the Del Mar Futurity. It was actually his third race to Del Mar Futurity. Next time out, grade one competition again. American Pharaoh. Finished seven behind by 23. Finally broke his maiden at the fairgrounds. Went gate to wire in that race. Got away with very slow fractions. Didn't do well in the gun runner. A couple races after that. Struggled badly in the rebel. Keith DeSormo just kept putting him in big races, so he didn't stop. <laughs> he really likes his horse. Ran him again in the Louisiana Derby. 132 to 1. Finished 8 behind by 7 and a half. Got a nice drop in class a couple races back. An allowance race at Churchill Downs. Showed significant improvement in that race. Finished at third, only behind by a length and three quarters. Next time out, Matt Wynn finished third in that race. Just behind by two and a half. He's been showing increasing speed figures. Getting 72 on the seven horse next level. I will use next level on my tickets. Like five to one, it's dynamic. His trainer, Steve Asmussen, well, he's won this race four times. Dynamic broke his maiden in his third try over a sloppy track at Oakland, winning by three. Then he tried to rebel, and he didn't do so well in that one. Finishing fifth. Try for some more derby points. Put him in Arkansas Derby in that. Well, that, that was off. Finishing tenth behind by 29. A couple races back. An optional claiming race at Oakland. By a length and a half in that Texas Derby, that wasn't a bad race at all. Losing by one length to EJ won the cup. Posted his fastest speed figure in that race. He's been showing increasing speed figures since horse. He would like a little pace to run into. He should get a pretty good pace in this race. Getting 5 to 1 on the 8 horse Dymatic, I will use Dymatic on my tickets. Let's take a look at your morning line favorite. It's just a touch trained by Brad Cox. It's nine to five. Won his maiden debut at the fairgrounds, winning by four and a quarter. Next time out in Gotham, finished second. Then he bumped him up in class, running the great one bluegrass stakes, and they stretched him out to a mile and an eight. Not bad at all finishing second behind Sierra Leone. Kentucky Derby, yeah, that was a disaster for him. He got bumped around a lot. Found himself behind horses. Finished last in that race. Brad Cox gave him some time off. He's taking a big step down in class in this race. He has the fastest brisnet speed figure in this race. You know who has the second fastest brisnet speed figure? It's just a touch. You know who has the third fastest brisnet speed figure? It's just a touch. Who has the fastest buyer speed figure in this race? Well, it's just a touch. He is the fastest horse in this field. He should be forward in this race. Getting nine to five on a nine horse just a touch. I will use just a touch on my tickets. Take a look at the 10. Save the trees. Save the trees is a perfect two for two. Stretching out for the first time. 
Broke his maiden at Keeneland, went about three quarters of a lane, went from last to first. That's impressive. Next time out, going to start allowance race, about two and three quarters at Churchill. Getting 10 to 1 on a 10 horse. Save the trees. And to close out this field is Cascade Cruiser. Cascade Cruiser is trained by a guy I'm familiar with, Louis Roussel. Louis Roussel used to own the Fairgrounds Racetrack in New Orleans many years ago when I was a kid. I used to go to the Fairgrounds with my family back when Louis Roussel owned the track. If one of his horses was racing that day, you know, it was wise to bet him. His horses usually hit the board. Most of the time they won. Kind of expected at a racetrack that he owns. His horse is also owned by Ronnie Lamarck. Louis Roussel and Ronnie Lamarck owned Risen Star back in the day. Risen Star won the Louisiana Derby and then would later go on and win the Preakness and the Belmont. You're getting 20 to 1 on the 11 horse Cascade Cruiser. He's in good form. He's looked pretty good his last two races. And the last time out, that was a very slow pace he had to close into. And he won that race by a head. He's showing increasing speed figures. He's going to have to increase the speed figure some more in this one. He's interesting, though. He's very interesting at 20 to 1. But these are the horses I'm using. I'm using just a touch. Dymatic Henro. Next level. Horse I'm going to pick the win. I'm going with the fastest horse in the race. I'm going to go with just a touch. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Let me know who you're picking in this race. Good luck.